All right, everybody, welcome back to the Compulang Podcast. This episode is for the 5th of October, 2020. And the first story that we're looking at today is Google planning to shut the loophole, so-called, that big companies like Netflix or Spotify or Tinder are using to kind of get around what those companies like to call Google's 30% app tax. Now, if you remember from a previous episode of the CompuLang podcast, we talked about the Coalition for App Fairness, which was a uh, group of companies, Spotify and Epic Games, for example, had gotten together and created this Coalition for App Fairness to pretty much complain about what they call the Apple App Store's anti-competitive practices such as a 30% app tax. So these app taxes are essentially um, when you purchase an in-app purchase on an application, for example, in a game, if you buy like extra coins or something like that, that in-app purchase goes through Google or Apple's payment pro- or payment processor, and they take a 30% cut of that as their like platform fee, and then the remaining 70% actually goes to the developer. Uh, obviously, big companies don't like literally 30% of the what they're charging their customers just going to the App Store. They want more money. Um, So they're complaining about this and trying to get around it. So if you've ever used like Netflix or Spotify and you're paying for it, you'll know that when you had to set up that account, you had to go actually to the Netflix or Spotify website and type in your credit card information. And that is how those companies are kind of getting around so-called this app tax. Um, It's by using their own payment provider and actually getting their customers' information for themselves instead of going through the App Store APIs. So Google has announced that they're going to try and close this loophole and force the developers to actually pay this 30% tax. A little bit on the less combative side, Google did say that they are going to make it easier to install apps from third-party sources, which technically will make it easier for apps to still accept um, payment details themselves and not have to go through Google services. But, you know, how many people have third-party app stores installed? That's probably a very small minority. Anyways, um, that is it for that story. We'll have to see how that goes. Next up, there was a designer who hit it big on Twitter after he posted a screenshot or a few screenshots of his custom app uh, app or app icon theme on Twitter uh, got really popular. It's kind of a black and white minimalist icon theme. And if you're familiar with your iOS devices, you know that in the past it's been very difficult, well nigh impossible to customize app icons, uh, a feature which on Android has been available for a few years, very long time now. Um, But as of September, iOS 14 came out and users were quick to discover that using a couple nifty workarounds, they were able to customize their app icons. So this developer goes by the name of Traff online, uh, posted a screenshot of his new uh, app icon theme. It got very popular due to, in no small part, a prominent feature on one of MKBHD's recent videos. If you're familiar with Marcus Brownlee, tech channel, pretty popular. He, in one of his recent videos uh, about iOS 14 customization, actually installed this icon theme and that helped it gain at least a little bit of popularity. Anyways, this developer was lucky enough to really just hit the market in a sweet spot and according to the BBC, has now made over $140,000 $140,000 selling his icon pack at $28 a pop. All right, next up, we have the Earn It Act passing the Senate Committee at the United, in the United States government 22 to 0. 
So that's passing unanimously in committee. So it hasn't passed the Senate yet, and it's only just been introduced in the House. So this act purports to protect the exploitation, or rather protect children online, preventing the exploitation of children online, um, by forcing website owners to more closely monitor their content. However, according to this Newsweek article, some experts are warning of privacy risks. So kind of nationwide, we have the FF speaking out about this and a bunch of other privacy groups. Uh, essentially, they're complaining or bringing to light and also complaining that this act, while purporting to, while claiming that it is protecting children online will actually allow the government uh, severe overreach and uh, options to really crack down on free speech online. It does this through uh, taking Section 230 protections, which currently apply to website owners and make it so that they are not responsible for the content that their users post. For example, on Facebook, um, Facebook isn't responsible for what you post on Facebook. You are responsible for what you post on Facebook. And according to this article, that is due to these Section 230 protections. However, the Earn It Act would make it so that website owners would now have to earn those Section 230 protections by following a set of guidelines established by a not elected, an unelected committee that would be established by this uh, Earn It Act, or it's currently a bill, hasn't been uh, passed yet. So lots of people are worried that this could be yet another you know, threat to free speech online because it would incentivize website owners to be overzealously censorious in their moderation of content that their users post and could just be a real threat to free speech online. In a similar vein, there's a really uh, interesting website that you can check out really quickly. It's socialcooling.com. won't take more than five minutes of your time. It just kind of goes over a really friendly, uh, in, uh, really friendly format. It's just a lot of just kind of thousand foot view of uh, what they term social cooling, big data, uh, privacy online, and reputation, and how all of that is starting to affect our culture. So I'd highly recommend you check that website out. It's socialcooling.com. All right, next up we have a bit of YouTube news. On September the 28th, YouTube eliminated crowdsource video captioning, which was a feature that allowed viewers of a video, just anyone really, to submit uh, captions for a video. So for example, if YouTube's auto-generated captions weren't quite picking up something correctly, a user could go in there and add a correction. However, YouTube is now removing that feature to kind of the dismay of a lot of people online. Apparently there was a petition that garnered over 500,000 signatures, according to this article by Ars Technica. And to make it even worse, I guess, uh, September 28th was during Deafness Awareness Week. So YouTube really timed that one kind of poorly. Um, yeah. All right. And the last thing that we're going to talk about today is a bit of more interesting kind of fun news. If you're familiar with Gravity Industries or Richard Browning, who is the guy behind Gravity Industries, um, they recently partnered with Great North Air Ambulance Service in the UK and tested out a jetpack paramedic. So if you're familiar with Gravity Industries, essentially that is their that's their product. They make jetpacks. And if you follow their Instagram, like I do, 
every once in a while when their videos pop up in your feed, you're just like, oh my goodness, these we literally have jetpacks. We do have jetpacks. It is 2020. And this is like the future is now. So we so this uh, story is about how Gravity Industries is now partnering with this Great North Air Ambulance Service in the UK to try and get paramedics strapped onto jetpacks and send them to places that could take so much more time to reach by foot. Uh, the, the example they give in the article, you could fly to the top of a mountain in 90 seconds rather than taking over half an hour to get there on foot. So I see this as an absolute win for technology. You know, getting paramedics to the people who need help the fastest, whether that's by like on foot, on helicopter, or literally on a jetpack. I think this is super cool, and I'm always looking forward to see what Gravity Industries has in store for us. So I'd highly recommend you check out their Instagram. That's at Take On Gravity. Anyways, that is all the stories that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the CompuLang podcast. I always have fun recording these. You can check out the podcast on Spotify or anchor.fm slash CompuLang and feel free to leave a voice message. Always enjoy receiving those. All right, that's all I have for you today. See you next week.